Hello friends, welcome to my vlog. In this vlog, we'll be discussing how to prepare for Middle East country job. If you are healthcare professionals and looking for a job in Middle East country, especially in government sector, uh, this vlog will definitely help you. I work in Qatar for almost nine years, from 2013 till 2021. I, what I'm going to tell in this vlog is through that experience. So to make it uh, more easy for discussion i have divided this uh, this topic under three subheading the first one is clinical experience the second one is application process and the last one is preparation for an interview if you get shortlisted so the first one is clinical placement so once you completed your graduation or post graduation so is make sure that uh, you get the right clinical exposure uh, by saying that, I also would like to emphasize that your gender matters a lot here um, if you're applying for government sector in Middle East countries. Mm, especially if you are male, you need to be very careful for selecting your clinical specialization. Uh, you need to select the job which, which requires more muscle power if you are a male. Uh, I mean, so for like example, in mental health nursing, requirements of males are, are higher in number. Uh, in, I mean, in emergency department, the male number of males required uh, is quite high and in operation theater. So please be mindful uh, if you are male, you need to choose your clinical specialty very carefully because the vacancies for males are very, very less in Middle East countries. Uh, so if, you are, if your specialty is good enough, um, then only the chances are higher for you. Uh, for females, uh, there are no restrictions because number of vacancies for females is very high. So and they get easily uh, they get in they get selected easily as compared to males so as i mentioned the clinical specialization selection of your clinical specialization is a key in order to get selected and again it depends on your gender so when you select a clinical specialization please try to identify a hospital which has either jci i prefer to go with the joint commission international accreditation um, because the standards of that hospitals are qu quite at international level. So once you work in that hospital, chances that you get shortlisted and being called and are high if you are if you are having the JC, experience in JC accredited hospital. Select a specialization right so that the chances of getting shortlisted will be high for you. Once you have at least two to three years of experience, then you can think about up starting to apply. So before you apply, uh, you need to identify who is a partner agent in your country. So if you're applying for South Asian, South Asian countries, um, the, especially from India, we have two partner agents in India who recruits for Middle East countries. The first one is Jerry Vargas Agency, uh, which is very well known. They're working for decades um, and they're authentic people. I went to Qatar through them. So I can comment, I can definitely comment about them. They didn't charge me anything and the process is very transparent. If you're qualified, there is no, um, you need not to pay any single rupees for the agent. So uh, I suggest Kata, uh, I suggest Jervirgis Agency or Jessina Agency. They, they recruit for the most of the Middle East countries. Uh, so if you're applying for Qatar, I strongly suggest to go with both of, uh, either of them, Jessina or Jervirgis. After the after identification identification of your partner agent for the particular country that you are aiming for, the second step is clearing the um, exams that are required for Middle East country. If you are planning to go to Qatar, there is a prometric exam um, for healthcare professionals. If you are planning to go to Dubai, uh, there is a HAD exam. So and Oman and Kuwait and Saudi. Uh, and Bahrain that has their own prometric exam. So it depends on which country you are targeting. Uh, please do prepare for, please, I think having your prometric cleared will definitely help you to get shortlisted. So uh, prometric exam is relatively easy exam as compared to NCLEX RN. Uh, the questions are around 150. Uh, it's a three hours exam and passing uh, score is 50%. So if you are a decent uh, average student, it's, it will not be difficult, that difficult to get the passing mass in prometric exam. So once you have the prometric exam, and then you need to spend some time on building your CV because um, because CV CV is a true picture of what you what you as a professional. So 
I, I think I suggest to spend substantial amount of time to build your CV. Make it short, make it just two to three pages, maximum four pages. Don't go more than that. Nobody has time to go through all of your pages. They will just look for your core uh, education, your professional education and core professional skills. So that's what they're looking for and highlight your academic as well as clinical, um, academic and clinical achievements that you have. Uh, and if you have done anything special like ACLS or ILS certification, infection control certification or any uh, specialization certification, so please do, don't forget to add that in your CV. So building your CV is a core task, I, I believe, because the authorities uh, once they short once, they, once you have been once you have been screened in India by your agent, they will forward that all CV bunch to the Qatar authorities, and then it will go to the respective department. For example, mental health, there they, it goes to the workforce manager department. It belongs to, so it goes to the workforce manager, and they will further screen it there. So if they don't have, they have bunch of uh, applications. They don't spend more than two to three minutes per CV. So if you're writing whole of your primary education or secondary education, your hobbies and you know, um, that, that won't help you at all. So don't just try to focus on including your major clinic, uh, clinical experience, your academic achievements uh, and your core clinical skills. So that is the core, that is a key while building your CV. So if you need a special session on that, please let me know in the comment box. I can definitely talk about how to build a CV. After building a CV, the second one is um, application process. So once you pass the prometric exam, you have identified your partner agent, then uh, straight away go to the partner agent's website. Uh, I will I will give the link of Jerry Vegas Agency in the description box. Uh, you can go and open your account, register yourself with them and upload your CV. And then as you, uh, you can screen the job availability there and apply from there directly. Please do remember that focus on government jobs don't i would i won't suggest anyone to go for private jobs because private job there is uh, the facilities are very less the salary is comparatively very very low uh, a nurse in qatar uh, almost get around three lakhs uh, if they go with the family if they go bachelor around two and two lakhs almost so it depends on and again this is basic salary i'm talking about like uh, it's a base salary uh, and if you get promotion you may go up to six lakhs so that's the that's the kind of salary they offer so, uh, spend this is a life-changing experience if you get a, if, you, if, if you're able to get a job in Qatar and it's definitely going to change your life please do focus on building your CV and once you apply and if you have done everything correctly by this time if you are if you are work in a uh, in, in a critical uh, skill area like example I mentioned uh, if you work in ICU if you work in CCU or mental health or emergency setting or operation theater chances are that you will get shortlisted and if you completed the prometric pro exam as well uh, chances are there that you will get shortlisted and you will be called for interview so once you call for interview that means that they really want you they, they really want you to be uh, to work for uh, for their government so uh, it's up to you now you shouldn't be giving any chance to downgrade yourself because your cv has talk about talk behalf of you and they have they really want you that's why you have been shortlisted and called for an interview to check whether the skills and uh, education that you have mentioned in your cv is matching uh, with you uh, and that's what they are going to check during the interview so so if you are uh, if you work in icu if you work in mental health you know which are the core clinical skills and knowledge that you require to work in that area for example if i if i'm a mental health nurse so i know what is requirement for me i, I may be uh, the question there will be some question about risk formulation there will be some question about suicide prevention there will be question on minimization of aggression violence de-escalation uh, psychotropic medications and therapeutic engagement so these are the core areas of mental health nursing so uh, i i before going for any interview i will just uh, review all of this and if I'm going for, if I have been called for managerial post interview, so what is important for managerial interviews? Conflict, conflict resolution, you know, material management, supplies and equipment, uh, manpower management, and so on. Uh, if you're working in ICUs, definitely there'll be some questions about myocardial infarction, defibrillation, CPR, tracheostomy care, uh, and so on. So you know which area you're working. So please do identify at least 10 topics which are which the question may come around uh, so just uh, identify 10 8 to 10 topics 
that is very core or very you know that is very crucial for you to work in that particular department so and the question 90% chance is there the question will be around that so in middle east countries they also look for your in your personality how which kind of person you are because the the cult uh, the healthcare system in middle east countries is multicultural so we have professionals from almost around 25 30 nationalities so when i was working in qatar in my hospital there were people from 23 nationalities so and my day to day interactions were almost around 18 nationalities so you need to be inclusive uh, you need to be uh, respectful for others culture uh, you need to uh, easy to go along with other people uh, so that kind of qualities also they'll be checking um, uh, checking in you when when you when you talk you just need to talk about team spirit you need to talk about how how big, how good team member you are in your team how can you positively contribute for team culture so that all things also equally important so please don't forget to include that in your answer so uh, so this is this is the important hints and always remember that on this interview when the authorities from Middle East countries they come to Qatar they won't spend time more than 20 more than 15 to 15 maximum 20 minutes per candidate because they he, here they just do the screening and most of the post they hire from India um, or South Asian countries is for staff nurse it's really lucky if you have good experience you may get as a charge nurse that is a man, middle level manager position so so please do prepare that uh, prepare for those positions because if you have work in academics uh, as a lecturer in nursing colleges or chances are that you may not get shortlisted so they want current clinical experience so please be mindful of that as well so these are some clinical these are some critical uh, critical areas that you need to focus on uh, so questions in interview will be very direct they will not be um, indirect questions most of the questions they, they will and the uh, authorities are keen just remember that authorities are keen to take you uh, to that country and, and you don't give any opportunity to reject you because spend more time if you go wrong uh, in the beginning they may not uh, give the opportunity uh, most anticipated question um, will be introduce yourself so you need to be very thorough very careful about what you're talking uh, don't talk about you know lengthy introduction just don't don't exceed more than one minute to one and a half minute for for introducing yourself and you need to include your major clinic um, academic achievements there uh, how good student you were when you were studying and how good professional you are when you're practicing so uh, add that in your um, uh, in your answer and if you have done any additional certification uh, that will really help you so uh, one another trick another hint i would like to give you to get shortlisted if you are still working uh, if you do some certification course from stanford university or Harvard university uh, or university of london i think this will definitely help you just do a small certification course related to your specialization it may not cost you more than 100 or 150 dollars uh, so that definitely help you if you work in ICU do some ICU related short courses from this, uh, this uh, universities these are well known universities and it will definitely increase the weight of your CV so um, I did that um, from Harvard and this, it has definitely helped me uh, to, to climb the career ladders it will give an edge over other candidates so if you have that's all for the guys today if you have any doubt please let me know and I will definitely, uh, I'm happy to answer your questions. And the next vlog I'll be preparing on how to prepare for Western countries. So that's all for my end today. Um, uh, if you find this vlog uh, is helping you to, to get the knowledge that you're looking for uh, and it's informative, please do consider subscribing. Uh -huh.